Hello world of YouTube and welcome to the third of four of the year list for 2012. This is the free albums slash mixtapes video. Uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about the 11 free albums slash mixtapes that may not be free anymore but they were free when I got them so that is why they are on this list of the year. Now there's a lot of good free music that came out this year so this list was actually very very hard to make. But I'm happy with the decisions that I've made, and hopefully you agree with them as well. I have two honorable mentions. Like I stated, all these lists have honorable mentions. And my honorable mention for this list, one of them, is the other project that my friend Mac put out, Alcoves. It's very aggressive and distorted and reverby and all that stuff. If you want to check it out, it is linked below. It's, got, it's a good effort put forth for his first full-length album. I endorse it, and I can't wait for more Alcoves. Just refine your production a bit. That's all I have to say. Anyway, the other one is Loser, Volume 2, by Ray the Coolest Loser, who is a YouTube rapper, or he's a rapper that's on YouTube. And uh, I heard about this guy from the Don't Funk Up the Beats contest that uh, uh, Funk Volume did last year. And I heard this guy's version of the song, and I liked it. So I was up to his channel, and then he put out a mixtape. And I liked the mixtape. The beats are interesting. Not what I would expect from him... But they work really well with his flow and his lyricism and stuff. And I like it. Go check it out. It's good. Go check out his channel, too, if you like rap. Ray the Coolest Loser. He's a good rapper. Moving on to the list. In at number 11 is Nehru Jackets by Heems. Uh, I didn't get this album, this mixtape, when it came out. I got it, actually, a couple of months ago. And that's partially why it's so low. Uh, I do like it a lot. And R.I.P. to Death Grips, because I did... Or Death Grips. And R.I.P. to... Uh, to <laughs> To Das Racist, because I did like Das Racist, and it sucks that they're not going to be making music anymore. But this is a good, this is a good solo effort from Heems of Das Racist. Um, it's got some comedy, it's got some serious lyricism, it's got some interesting beat making or beats on here, um, and its beats can somewhat go back to his uh, heritage, which I think is cool. And he like plays that into it somehow or somewhat into the stuff and it's good i give him my endorsement i like i like this thing a lot i haven't listened to the new his new one that he put out while uh, the water kingdom one or whatever but i do like this one neighbor jackets yeah and at number 10 is february 30th by um ali tamanique i can't think of his name february 30th by ali tamanique i reviewed this thing on the channel i like this thing i do have some problems with the production but overall it's a good first release from this kid um <clears throat> His flow is really tight and solid, and for a kid, he does a really good job of censoring himself, even when he's having fun with it and swearing a lot. Uh, I like this. I like this. Uh, this mixtape. It's really good. Go check it out. It's nice and lovely and fun. It's got a good fun vibe. I compared it to Will Smith beats Watsky. Pretty much is that. It's Will Smith and Watsky meshed into one. Yeah. In at number nine is Zelda Metal Volume Three by Jim Cook, also known as Jim. -y. O2 on YouTube. I've used his music here for uh, Let's Play stuff a lot of the time, and this is his third, if you can tell by volume three, uh, compilation of songs that he's rock tinged or rock infused slash metal infused with uh, Zelda songs. And I would say rock infused because some of these are very soft and very um, acoustic y and not as hard driving, but some of these tracks, goddamn, his remake of the um, observatory song, the Astral Observatory from Majora's Mask. His remake of that is heavy as shit, and it's great. But he also has some fun, heartfelt ones in here, like the shop and stuff, and it's good. It's a good, probably has some of my favorite metal remixes he's done of Zelda songs. And has some low points, but overall this thing is really solid. I like it. It's good. Go check out Jim Cook and the EP, or the album. Both are linked below. Have fun with it. If you like Zelda and you like metal, you're probably going to like this. In at number 8 is Tape Fuck by Nah. <clears throat> My friend Austin showed me this release. And uh, it's it's this loud, noisy, loop-filled, trippy kind of lo-fi instrumental tape. It's really, really interesting. And it's good. If you like noise with some hip-hop. If you like Death Grips, essentially, you'll like Tape Fuck. I'm actually using one of the Tape Fuck songs for a song, so yeah. But it's good. It's it's really... If you don't mind a lot of drones and noise and and 
very loud production. Uh, you wouldn't mind this thing. It's it's pretty solid for a free album. It is good. Again, like the rest of the albums, this will be linked below for you to check out. And at number seven is On the House by Slaughterhouse. Uh, when I review the mixtape and the album, you'll know my full thoughts, but I like this thing. I like the beat choices. I like the samples that they use. Uh, they spit very well on this thing, and it's a great mixtape. All in all, it's a great mixtape. Um, for them to release this as a free gift to us is very nice of them because it does a really good job of letting them flow, which is better to say than the album, but I'll talk about that when I do that. Either way, I recommend this thing highly. It's really good. The beats are really good. Juggernauts was almost on my songs of the year list because I couldn't stop listening to that thing. Uh, they do a really good job of using that 50 cent sample for the chorus and all that stuff. They just I felt this was more thought out than the album, but I'll get to that when I review the album. In at number six is the People's Rapper In at number six is the People's Rapper LP by John Connor. Now he put out two releases this year, the blue album and this album. Both mixtapes, both free, both spinning on a certain MC's beat. And I think the reason why I like this one more than the Blue Album is because I'm not that into Jay-Z, but I am that in to uh, Eminem. And I love what he does to these beats. Uh, he does a great job of reinterpreting some of these songs, reimagining them, and even reinterpreting how their flow structure for the songs originally were. And I feel like John Connor really deserves to be more known out there as a rapper because he does a really good job of spitting telling a story of structuring a song well i really like this thing and some of these tracks are just really well put together and i'm happy that it is because he even does some stuff on some eminem beats that i'm not a big fan of that i enjoyed on this thing so kudos to john connor for putting out a really good structurally sound eminem tribute album and at number five is for evan a day by big crit now while i didn't get live from the underground i did Get Forever in a Day. And I uh, love Forever in a Day. It's like um, Return of Forever expanded. The production is good. The concept is well structured. And I like Big Crip. He does a really good job of being a conscious Southern MC, which is something you don't see nowadays. Big Crit is great. Yay. Sorry. I, <laughs> I, uh,. I feel like we're not taking this seriously. Forever and Today is a really good album, and from start to finish, the small little skits that he throws in there, the very personal side to this album that he reveals, is just really, really good. Um, I love the brass in his production. I think it's really well sound, and the fact that he produces things himself is nothing but uh, spectacular. I love Big Crit. I can't wait to hear more Big Crit. Go check out this mixtape. In at number four is Watsky's Nothing Like the First Time. Uh, I love this thing. When it came out, I thought it was great. Uh, a lot of people shit on Watsky. I don't get why. He's a playful MC that does a really good job of constructing his songs, both from a lyrical and joke-filled standpoint. He does do a lot of jokey stuff, but he's also very clever with it. He's not just doing stupid jokes. He's great. Uh, and he's brave. He spits on beats that people, I don't think, would in a comical manner, like Aliyah and The Throne, and fucking Dr. Dre. Although the Dr. Dre song was a bit serious, but he had some good punchlines in there. Watsky's great. I like Watsky. Nothing like the first time is a good mixtape. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it a lot. It's good. And plus you get live songs on there too, from the tour that I wish I got to go on that I didn't get to, sadly. <clears throat> you get to hear them reinterpret the songs that he spent on other people's like 4AM, and um, show goes on, and all that stuff, so... Yay. In at number three, it's Time's End, a Majora's Mass remix, which I talked about in one of the songs in my honorable mentions in the songs list. But this album, I'm actually going to do a review of fairly soon because I got it near the end of the year. It came out the 21st of uh, December. Because around the whole end of the world thing, you can go to terriblefate.com and see a timer. And then when it was over, you could get this album. It was a tribute to Majora's Mask, and it was clever because the list, the countdown, was like the games. It was like, you've met a terrible fate, have you? And then it was this really, really well-constructed album. It's very symphonic, very big. These adaptations are spectacular. They're immaculately done. You have the ocarina incorporated into it, too, which makes you just more zeldified. You got really good brass and strings and choruses and just, ah, this thing is fantastic. I just, I, I admire a good score. 
but I admire a score done when it's a remix of a score in the same respect. Like, this guy or, like, group of people, this composer did a really fantastic, spectacular job of reinterpreting these songs and even, like, expanding on the thoughts of the notes and all that stuff. It's just really good. I like this thing. Maybe it's because I'm a Zelda fan, but I really like this thing. And I really think you should check it out if you like Zelda, if you haven't yet, because it'll blow your fucking mind. Uh, just, uh, to hear these songs reinterpreted in such a way with all these sound effects thrown in to make it feel more atmospheric is lovely. It's a lovely thing that someone did that's a fan of, of Legend of Zelda, and I think it shows that the creativity that games can bring forth in someone, and I like it a lot. I really like it. Go check it out. Time's end, but fucking, um, I'll have a link below. I can't remember the guy's name, but go check it out. And at number two is Soul Made It You Verse 6 by Crooked Eye. Uh, like I said in the review, after the first couple of tracks, once Monster hits, I listen to the thing the whole thing through. The whole album, pretty much the whole way through. Um, the more I listen to it, some of the songs get a little stale, but overall, I still love this thing. I love the beat choices. I, I love Crooked Eye's flow. I love his lyricism. I, I, I just, I think this is a, a, a very well-constructed mixtape, aside from the first two tracks. Uh, intro not being one of them, but either way, it's a really good West Coast hip-hop album, mixtape thing. Uh, and I... I, I look forward more to more from Crooked Eye, because he's still showing that he can spit very well and construct his flows very not imaginatively but very creatively amongst an entire long ass mixtape so i look forward to more i commend him crooked eye good job and then number one is no love deep web by death grips I had to put it in number one it's a really good it's a really good free album and it the the meaning behind the album the reason why it's free just makes it that much better because Death Grips still won't get fucking to put the album out this year. <coughs> While it's not my favorite Death Grips release, as a free album, it's really freaking good. It's got really uh, dark production, very dark lyricism, as Death Grips is known to do. And it puts them in a minimalistic standpoint, which is something they hadn't done before. It expands their repertoire and their soundscape as a whole. I like the creativity behind this group. I can't wait for more Death Grips. That's pretty much my list. If you'd like to see the other lists, they are linked below. If you'd like to see these albums, if they are still available, they will be linked below. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go. Hopefully you enjoyed this album. Hopefully, hopefully you agree with my list. If not, I'm sorry. It's my list. I'm sorry. Ah. But yeah. It's going to be it. Sorry. I'm a bit scatterbrained about that right now, but I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm Vyrock. You guys are going to have some situations. See you in the day.